We are on top of each other. Homeowner Lisa is desperate to sell. It is time for us to go. This house is like a catalogue of disappointment. Oh, it's just pattern overload. The kitty litter is in the bathroom. Ugh. Selling your property is all about flaunting your assets so potential buyers fall in love. Marketing, curb appeal, decor, all play a part in how fast your property moves. My mission is to give unsellable properties a slick yet affordable makeover to turn them into unstoppable sellers. This adorable three-bedroom cottage in the city is located on a big, gorgeous lot in a quiet and serene neighbourhood. It has one and a half storeys, dining room, loft and one bar. It's listed at $399,000. On the outside, it looks like a tiny jewel of a house, but homeowner Lisa hasn't had a single offer and she is desperate to sell. So I'm here to help. Letter carrier Lisa has been raising her two kids in this cottage on her own. Her daughter Emma is training as a pastry chef and Michael is finishing high school. Lisa's love affair with her home goes back to her childhood. One time we were coming by and I just said to my friend on a lark, I go, oh, I love that cottage, I'm going to buy that one day. <laughs> and then I ended up buying it. Ten years later, her quaint cottage isn't the dream house it once was. Now, three adults are crammed inside. <laughs> I think I'm feeling that we are on top of each other a little bit. The weekend comes along, and the girlfriend's here, and the boyfriend's here, and then that's when things get very busy. Lisa's had enough, so she's gone ahead and bought another house. We are to take possession of in less than two months. But her plan has backfired. She thought her cottage would sell within days, but after a month on the market, still no offers. And the thought of carrying two mortgages is terrifying. I get overwhelmed sometimes. I start to panic a little, like, what if it doesn't sell? What am I going to do? With no plan B, she's got to sell. It's time to go. It is time for us to go. This high-end neighborhood overlooks the bluffs along the lake. The marina, the beach, the yacht club, all are big draws. We're only 20 minutes from the city centre, but it's like we're smack dab in the country. In an area where million dollar houses are snapped up in a week, Lisa's house should have sold. On the outside, it looks perfect, but Lisa, the homeowner, hasn't had a single bite. So I'm going to get inside and find out what's wrong. The porch beam is bent and it looks like the lattice underneath the porch is missing. It's a little rustic, but hopefully the inside of the house will make up for it. Feels a bit pokey in here. That's because we've got a big black sofa, black chair, black fireplace. Dark furniture makes the room feel smaller. I'm not a fan of the window treatment. And what funny bits of material everywhere, kind of mismatched patterns. Off the living room, there are two small bedrooms, which are quaint and suit the cottage with yet more of that strange fabric. This is supposed to be the dining room, but I know for a fact that three people are going to struggle to eat around that table, and buyers need somewhere to eat. <laughs> it's just pattern overload. The dining room leads into a rather small kitchen. Now I feel like I'm in the country because it is very rustic in here. This is a blind for a window. What is it doing in here? That's completely crazy. The problem with this kitchen is there's no storage and it's grubby. Quite a lot of work. Oh, my. The kitty litter is in the bathroom. Ugh, ugh. This house is like a catalogue of disappointment. I was hoping that upstairs was going to be a romantic loft hideaway. And you get a student dig. Oh, with 
quite a lot of water damage. That terrifies buyers. And yet more fabric. Crikey, it's all over the place. This room is definitely the worst room in the house. On the outside, this house is picture perfect. On the inside, it is anything but. You've got a shabby kitchen with hardly any cupboards, you've got a sitting room that's dark, and a loft that would give most people nightmares. And that is why this house is unsellable. If Lisa is going to get a sale, she needs to hear some home truths. Lisa, first off, this is such a cute cottage. The garden is really beautiful. And then you walk into this sitting room, and a leather sofa doesn't scream country cottage. It's more sort of downtown penthouse. And what we want to do is we want to create that country cottage look. OK. <laughs> now, the dining room. Yeah. Do you actually eat in there? Uh, not often. Really, it's used as a place to get from the living room to the kitchen. I think one of the most important things for a family is somewhere to eat, and buyers look for that. So we really need to re-establish it as a dining room instead of a not quite sure what this is room. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love lofts. I was really hoping I'd go up there and it would be this, like, little hidey hole. And uh, I walked into a student dig. <laughs> <laughs> so. Tell me about the room. My son reached a certain age, mm. 15, 14. I got the idea that he needed his own privacy space, so we traded rooms. Purely from a selling perspective, that needs to be the piece de la resistance. So you draw people up into this lovely loft master bedroom. And there's a problem with the water damage. OK, honestly, when I moved here, it was like that. Mm. Five years or so after I lived here, I then redid our roof. Right. So if there was any issues, there certainly isn't now. OK. The buyers have to know that, because at the moment, they're going to walk in and go, there's water damage, and they're going to be totting up in their head how much this is going to cost them, and they're going to take it off the asking price. Now, Lisa, I have one more question for you. Yes, Sophie. Are you prepared to say goodbye to the scarves? <laughs> I think I'll live. Then we can get started. Lisa's house is unique and it's on a great plot, but it's been languishing on the market for almost a month now and she and her two kids need to move out fast. I just hope they're getting the support they need from their real estate agent, Candice, and she's going to be able to find the perfect buyer for this house. Candice, this is a pretty special property, isn't it? It is. Tell it to me straight, why is this house not selling? Well, you're in a unique area. There are a lot of million-dollar homes in this area. Having a cosy little cottage isn't really conducive to what the area is. Have you had any feedback from buyers coming through the front door? Uh, yes, not liking the kitchen, the colour mm. of the kitchen, the lack of the cupboards. Yeah. And is this information you've passed on to Lisa? Yes. Now, as a real estate agent, would you have suggested to her don't buy until you've sold? Yes, Lisa's bought a home. Mm -hmm. She got out there on her own uh, without any guidance from real estate, bought herself a home while well, she still owned a home. That is just a sleepless night situation. And the market right now is telling us this isn't selling. If we make the improvements, it's going to stand a chance in this market. That's what we're counting on. Improving Lisa's odds is what it's all about. So to show her what is selling in the neighbourhood, I'm taking her to a comparable house they got two asking price offers in only one day. Come on in, Lisa. Wow, this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything feels like it's tied in. There's not, you know, blue here, pattern there. Yeah. Everything has a place. It works well. Mm -hmm. Come on through. So, the million dollar question, what is this room? Oh, this is definitely the dining room. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> no question. <laughs> but the good thing about this room is when a family walks through the door, they can imagine themselves sitting here having family yeah. meals, and that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Very effective. I think the lesson's been learned. Should we go on through? First impressions? Immaculate, lots of prep area, storage, wow. This is a perfect example of how to prepare your kitchen for yeah. sale. And I would be happy to eat my meals off the prep space, off the floor. This place is immaculate. 10 out of 10. Wow. Now, cast your mind back. What does the loft look like? What are you seeing? <laughs> 
a mess. <laughs> in a couple of days' time, you're going to be seeing something like this. Oh. This room says comfort, for sure. The whole house looks amazing. And now I understand, you know, when someone walks in your house, it's important that they don't have to imagine, you know, where are we going to eat or where are we going to sit? Exactly. Yeah. They got two asking price offers in one day. Oh, my gosh. And sold the house in two weeks. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. To help Lisa sell fast, our contractor, Anthony Sayers, will handle the structural fixes. Uh, well, walking up to the front of the house, it's a great porch. I love the feel of it. What's up with the post, though? Oh, it's uh, decorative. I think I bought, like, the wrong one, and it just ended up being faulty. It looks really bad, and the first thing <laughs> that we should do is change it. Yeah. First impressions yeah. really, really count. Oh, OK. Just coming down here in the living room, a great fireplace. Uh, I noticed there's a lot of smoke on the exterior yes. of the brick. So what we'll do is paint the brickwork with a smoke and fire resistant paint. Okay. Um, going upstairs, I noticed there's some water damage in the loft. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll cut out the drywall that's there, and then I'll spray like a stucco paint just to match up the two oh, ceilings. Oh, great. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the great thing is it doesn't sound like it's going to break the bank. No. Minor changes, but they'll make a big impact. Okay, great. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think we should get started. Then. Yes. Come on. Ooh. So it's out with the old and in with the new. I've enlisted Lisa and her gang to de scarf, declutter, and destroy. Or should I just throw it downstairs? Those clashing, outdated fabrics covered a multitude of sins. Let's get the curtain out. <laughs> when selling your home, I always say remove at least one-fifth of your possessions so buyers can see what they're getting. Nice. You've already attached the lattice. Yeah, it just closes it off and makes it look nice and pretty much stops any critters trying to get underneath the deck. Well, I think it looks much, much better. We will paint it white just to match the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're going to take this cosmetic pillar out, replace it with a new one. Yes, it was bent, it didn't look good. It looked a bit wonky and curb appeal's so important. And I think especially if people are going to see a lot of houses, they sometimes just drive past and think, oh, that one doesn't look great from the outside yeah. and maybe just not even come inside. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I think it's going to look 100% improved. With only the initial stages complete, Lisa has already turned a corner. You know, now that I see what's going on, I'm just so excited about everything. Ah, you're fixing the water damage. How's it going? Well, I'm going to just take this piece of drywall out altogether, right. okay? Replace it with a new piece mm -hmm. and just give it the same texture that the right. rest of the ceiling has. So it's actually not too difficult? No, it's not. Brilliant, because I think having damage like this, if people see buckling like this, they immediately think there's a problem. Exactly. What are you expecting to find under the plasterboard? Uh, I'm hoping nothing. <laughs> Wrong. That's a whole other something, Anthony. Luckily, it's just the old insulation, which we can easily replace. To match the stucco, you may have to experiment with sponges and rollers to get just the right texture. Now that the loft is almost done, downstairs needs to catch up. At the moment, the sitting room's a bit dark and pokey. I want it to feel brighter, give it more of a country cottage feel and Anthony's work on the fireplace will give us just that. Once the brick has been cleaned, we're going to use a special primer. The primer seals the smoke from penetrating through the pigment of the paint. Once the brick has dried, we can go ahead and do the finished coat of paint. Very important to get in to all the little nooks and crannies. You just got to make sure you cover the whole thing. And there's no need to buy new furniture. A simple paint job does the trick and costs next to nothing. Sitting in the sun, painting, it's actually very therapeutic. It is thirsty work, though. I could use a beer. Lisa's wonky front porch won't be an eyesore any longer. The last thing you want is by suspicious that there may be structural problems. And this time, we'll make sure it's level. If we can keep this pace, Lisa's two mortgage nightmare may be over. When I drove up. I just couldn't believe the difference in the house. It looked like a new house. 
you know, now that I see what's going on, I'm just so excited about everything. And to be only halfway done just tells me like, wow, I'm really in for a surprise tomorrow. <laughs> Using MDF board, the dining room is an easy fix. We're making a bench in the corner to seat a family of six. The window treatments are getting a much needed upgrade as well. In the kitchen, gone is that hideous emerald green and replaced by a soft gray, giving this small room much more depth. And now that the kitchen has been prepped, Anthony's boys are on to stage two of the reno. Inexpensive kitchen cupboards with no fabric in sight. New paint and new hardware works every time. Voila. The reno is almost complete. And at this stage, just the right finishing touches make all the difference. If you've got a wood burning fire like this one, then stack some logs artistically in the grate because they look good, but they also smell great too. When you're selling your house, your kitchen should be clean and decluttered, but it's still nice to dress it up a bit and add some colour. And what could be better than edible props you can buy in your grocery store? Clean is key when you're selling your house. So if you've got a grimy old hob, nip down to the hardware store, get a new burner insert, new ring, and Bob's your uncle, almost a new cooker. In fact, Lisa's practically getting a brand new home. But will the buyers bite? Lisa's house is unique, but she and her two kids need to move out fast. Let's get the curtain out. <laughs> And what we want to do is create that country cottage look. Now that I see what's going on, I'm just so excited about everything. Our work here is done, and this cottage looks amazing. We've transformed it from a series of unfinished rooms with mismatched patterns and colours into a picturesque, harmonious country cottage in the city. It's got a lot of charm, and with this gorgeous garden, I think it really is an oasis of calm away from the hubbub of the city. The outside of Lisa's cottage promised a lovely country hideaway, but inside was a catalogue of disappointments. In the living room, the chunky leather sofa, the black chair and the smoke-scarred fireplace had buyers heading for the hills. Now this room emanates fresh country cottage. The sofa has a lovely cream coverlet with complementary coloured pillows. We painted the fireplace a clean, crisp white and added a sprinkling of knickknacks. New wall hangings and upgraded window treatments complete the wow factor. The dining room setup confused buyers and was family unfriendly. We've changed the layout by building a banquette with an inexpensive paisley cushion. We've added a large country table, enhancing the flow of the space. Now this dining room is definitely a selling feature. We all know kitchens sell homes and I really felt sorry for this one. So we painted the walls, updated the existing cupboard doors with new paint and hardware and added essential cupboard space under the window. Buyers will now be able to see that this kitchen means business. No more sweaty socks. We've turned this loft into a teenage-free oasis of calm. We've repaired the damage to the ceiling and added soothing touches like a neutral colour on the walls, crisp designer linens and complimentary window treatments. This bedroom now meets buyers' expectations of a master retreat. When selling your house, the interior needs to reflect the exterior. So at a total cost of just over $3,300, we've added value and uniformity throughout, maximised the space and transformed this cottage into a one-of-a-kind family home. If your house is unique, maximise it. It's probably its uniqueness that will help sell it. If it looks like a gorgeous cottage on the outside, make sure it looks like a gorgeous cottage on the inside, because buyers like it when they walk into a house that knows what it is. Curb appeal is so important. So if you've got a fabulous exterior, don't let it down with bent posts or missing lattice, because in the end, you've only got one chance to make a good first impression. Know your target market. If you've got a family house, it needs a family-sized dining room. Focus your house and the sale on the people who are most likely to buy it. So is Lisa sold. Oh, my gosh. 
This is awesome. I mean, in the kitchen, I was like blown away by the new cupboards, all the space to put everything. I always thought this was such a small room, but actually it's like totally feels huge now. My house has completely transformed into a dollhouse. It's perfect. I can't even believe that it's my house. <laughs> Now that the transformation from rustic shack to storybook cottage is complete, let the open house begin. Come on in, guys. I like the little seating area here. Do you think this is big enough to accommodate yourselves? Yeah. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Well, why don't you come on through to the kitchen? It's nice and clean, nice mm -hmm. and bright. Mm -hmm. I like the baskets and the open shelves there. Come on in. This is a nice, cosy house, isn't it? Do you feel that you're transported back to an English country cottage? <laughs> it does have that style, yes. It does. Oh! <laughs> it's an attractive bedroom, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yes. It's got a magic to it. So what are your thoughts on the look of the cottage? As soon as you see it down the street, you think, oh, that's a nice little house. Mm -hmm. And inside, it's got the same charm. Sounds second viewing territory to me. OK. I think this house ticks all the boxes. It's got everything potential buyers are looking for, and it's been quite a lot of hard work. After five long weeks on the market, Lisa's house is finally sellable. Her chances of getting the asking price of $399,000 are better than ever. Simone's house is just too big and expensive for her to maintain. Ooh, what have we got here? Who puts a loo next to the dining room table? Feels granny-like. It's granny -ish. Selling your house is stressful, especially if you're desperate to move. And probably the last thing on your mind is giving your home a makeover, but that's exactly what it might need. Now, my mission is to give lifelines to the owners of unsellable properties by giving them simple yet proven real estate tips to turn their unsellable houses into really quick sellers. This semi-detached home has an open concept main floor, three bedrooms, and two baths. This house has been on the market almost six months and hasn't received a single offer. It's listed at the bargain price of $419,000 and the homeowner is bewildered at the lack of interest. She needs to get out of this money pit and I said I'd give her a hand. 31-year-old business analyst Simone bought this, her first house, a year ago. Everybody was, you know, starting to get their own place, and I felt like I was getting up there in age, and I, you know, wanted to have property before I was 30. So I went out and found me a house. Yet Simone barely spends any time in her house and realises she'd feel much better living in a condo. I want to move to a downtown condo now because I'm used to having someone always around me. That's why I always have my friends hanging out. <laughs> But while she waits for a buyer, her home is bleeding her dry. I put in about $70,000 into the house, based on renovations. I had no money for furniture, I had no money for vases, I had no money for pictures, nothing. Simone is desperate. She can no longer afford her mortgage payments. There's been over 100 showings. It's been on the market for six months. And I don't understand. Not one offer. Everything is at stake if she doesn't sell. I could probably keep this house for another month, and that's barely making it. Simone's neighborhood is a hotspot for young families looking for larger houses with affordable price tags. There's a farmer's market, good restaurants, and a community center, all within a half hour subway ride from downtown. Houses here get snapped up within 14 days, yet Simone's house has been on the market for a jaw-dropping six months. This house is realistically priced and it's in the right location, so why no offers? I want to get inside and find out. Ooh, what have we got here? A load of shoes. It's the first thing I notice when I walk in the house is the shoes. This is quite strange. Not only is the buyer's first impression a granny's dining room, there's more. There is a bathroom in there, a loo. Who puts a loo next to the dining room table? Imagine how awkward it'd be. You're having a dinner party, someone goes to the loo. Oh, so weird. Look at this wall. You've got a huge expanse of white and not a single picture on it. It's really, really institutional 
and cold. It doesn't feel lived in, this house, apart from the shoes. Tell you what you need in this sitting room. There's one more sofa. Not. One, two, three, four, five. Five sofas in not a very big space. And what are two wall brackets doing on the coffee table? Nice big eating kitchen. You've got dining room, kitchen, breakfast bar. This house has way too many places to eat, and I don't usually say that. Nothing says buy me like dead foliage. Wow. The sticker is still on the inside of the oven. This kitchen never gets used. I hope upstairs has something to excite the buyers. Afraid not. This room is an empty box. Hmm. Not a great first impression in the master bedroom. The linen, old paisley fabric. It feels quite granny-like. Yet more shoes. The shoes are escaping from the cupboard. It looks like they're sort of marching out. You want to tidy these things away. This room is a real dichotomy. You've got old and dark, and then you've got some fresh and young. It needs to have more of a balance. This house has real potential to be a great family home. But at the moment, it's cold, it's dated, it has zip personality. And I'm not surprised no one's taken it. Unless we put the love back into this home, it's going to remain unsellable for a long time. If Simone wants to avoid another six months without a sale, she needs to listen hard. Simone, when I first walked into this house, 30 pairs of shoes in the dining room alone. Wow, I never counted. Right. Because this house is quite strange. It doesn't really feel like it's very lived in. I mean, take the kitchen, for instance. The sticker is still on the oven, which would suggest you've never used the oven. Yes, that would suggest it's correct. I have never used my oven. You've never used your oven. Buyers really get a sense of that when they come around the house. It feels quite cold. That could be something to do with the fact that you painted it a nice bright white colour, yes. but there's not a single painting on the wall. What's with that? Um, well, when I finished renovating the house mm -hmm. and I was tapped out for money, mm -hmm. all the, you know, the nice things of owning a house, like buying your vases and buying your paintings and really making it your own, I couldn't afford okay. to. Well, I think the thing about it is what you've done is you've done the, you know, the structural work, putting a loo by the dining room, which is slightly <laughs> eccentric, I'm not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> I definitely would not go to that loo if I was sitting around the table with my friends. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to go a metre away and go to the loo <laughs> while you're eating. And I do think five sofas in that area is overkill. Oh, okay. And then upstairs again, I think it could feel a bit more young, because it's probably going to be a young couple who's going to buy this house. That's and at true. the moment, it just, again, it feels a bit old, a bit institutional, a little bit drab. Are you prepared to make some changes? Yes. Good. Don't look so nervous, Simone. Simone's renovated three-bed house has been on the market for six months and hasn't received a single offer. She is desperate to move into a condo because her house is just too big and expensive for her to maintain on her own. And the longer it's on the market, the deeper she's dragged into debt. So I want to go and have a chat with Sonny, the real estate agent, and make sure he is doing everything in his power to get this house sold. Sonny, in that time, how many people have viewed the property? Wow, Sophie, we've actually had over 100 viewings on this particular property, a lot more so than any of my other listings. What is it about the decor that you don't like at the moment and you don't think is popular with the buyers? Well, as far as flow of energy and the colour tones and the patterns that have been selected, they really don't match. There's no symmetry no. there. The flow of energy is blocked by excessive amount of furniture being present in rooms. Now, how have you communicated that to Simone? It's kind of hard when you're calling the same person every week and saying the same, same thing, thing over and over again. There's not a lack of feedback. Maybe she just hasn't explored all the avenues. Is that right? Correct. So we're going to deal with the design side now, but what are you going to do from now? How are you going to market the house to them? Why don't we like to send out an abundance of email blasts mm -hmm. to the um, general public? Uh, we do post ourselves on several websites and right. portals that even the public like to view yep. uh, in order to find a home in the local area. So will you take new photographs once the house is completed so you can put them on your internet site? I can't wait. OK, very <laughs> exciting. 
Simone hasn't listened to her agent's advice. To make her see some sense, I'm taking her to a comparable house that was snapped up in five days. Hey. It's very country-esque. Definitely not my style. What I like here is it's a logical progression. You've got the sitting room, dining room, casual eating area, kitchen, and that's what buyers expect to see. Now, before you wrinkle your nose and go, it's not my style. Yeah. Do you know what I like most about this house? It feels cozy, and that is what is lacking in your home at the moment. Okay, I'll say that I understand that, but again, this is just not my style, so I'm trying to get past that. Let's go to the kitchen. All right, off we go. What do you think? Definitely not my style. Mm -hmm. The green and the brown and the red, and the appliances are kind of old. The appliances are a little dated and it's not high end, but because it's all finished off, or all ties in, it looks warmer and more inviting than your kitchen. I understand where you're coming from. I do kind of get the cozy feeling because it's mm. the small kind of nook going on here. So I get it. Let's go upstairs. Okay. It might be not your taste, but it is clean. It is decluttered. It has matching linen and it looks good. It's clean. It's clean, it's finished, it's tidy. There's no shoes. There's no shoes running out of the cupboard. At the moment, your bedroom is unfinished, slightly untidy, and a bit grannyish. It's grannyish? You've got a paisley bedspread. I it, happen to like that bedspread. It does say granny though, and you've got quite dark furniture. Yes. Now, I know that people like this style because it's sold in five days oh. for 7% over the asking price. That's fantastic. So this is what we'll be able to do with my house? We are going to make it inviting and warm. OK, let's do it. OK, come on then. Hallelujah. Now contractor Anthony Sayers can start on the desperately needed work. Anthony, will you tell Simone what we're going to get up to? OK, well, the first thing is we're going to make the front room the living room, OK? OK. Uh, but we need to create more usable wall space. So we'll do that by removing the closet door and making a new opening in the dining room here. OK. Don't worry, we are, we are qualified. Professionals? Professionals, okay, yeah. Just make sure. OK, <laughs> and then I'm also going to do a built-in shelving unit in the alcove so that the whole wall will be flush. Oh, OK, that sounds kind of cool. Anthony, what are you going to do with those bar well, stools? Well, um, I'm going to take the bar stools and I'm going to cut the legs okay. down so that they actually fit underneath okay, the counter. Great, OK, great, that's good. So I'm going to add a backsplash to the entire wall, and it'll just help highlight the countertop and your beautiful appliances. Oh, that'd be great. What we need to do to this house is give it better flow, make it look lived in, loved in, more modern, so it's going to appeal to a young, funky person like you. We need to get you to a condo. So, are you prepared to roll up your sleeves and get the job finished off? Yes, I'm ready. Let's get her done. Brilliant. Excellent. Most of Simone's clutter is actually shoes. Clearing away these distractions, no matter how large or small, gets potential buyers to focus on the prize. It's going to feel really weird to come into a home that's going to feel completely different from what I'm used to. So it already kind of feels like a different place. Simone is desperate to sell her house and begin a new life in a condo. So to kickstart interest in this property, I brought in the Unsellables team. Things are well underway, and as promised, Anthony is closing up the closet doorway in the living room. Aha, you've got started on the door. Yeah. Is it easy? Would I be able to do it? Of course you can. It's fairly easy. That must be so satisfying. Yeah. OK, now what? Next, we have to take the actual door jam out. Once that's done, we nail in the studs in the drywall. To finish, we sand and add paint, covering the evidence of what was there before. In the sunroom, the new paint is in the same tone as the rest of the open concept main floor. This colour choice, I never would have picked it in not in a million years, but now that it's on the wall, I'm kind of like, not so bad. Anthony's working hard on those bar stools. I've been told to bring you this. What 
on earth does it do? It says it's made in England, though, so I know it must be vital. <laughs> well, I need that. It's a miter box. Yep. Right? I'm going to cut these bar stools down, the legs. Because they're right. way too tall for the island. And so, basically, the mitre keeps the saw straight. Yes, exactly. Brilliant. Cool. It's just like a guide, right? Yep. So we just do that. Oh, fantastic. Let's hope buyers take to the new soft colour in the master bedroom as much as Simone has. <laughs> Not one to shy away from lots of work, Anthony is now on the kitchen backsplash. Marking the wall ensures the tiles will be laid evenly. I need some glue and a special trowel. OK, so now I've laid out some glue. I can actually start sticking the tiles on. Anthony's laying tiles from the centre and working outward. You're guaranteed a tip-top professional look no matter who finishes the job. Do you need any help there? Or? Um, actually, my arm is about to fall off, so you can take over sure. for a little bit. So I'm just doing, like, like circles? Is that what I'm doing? Wax on, <laughs> wax, wax off. <laughs> no, you're just getting rid of the slightly wet grout on the outside. I think I need to join a gym. <laughs> My arm's hurting arms of 12 minutes of sponging. Yeah, you need to develop those muscles, girl. I tell you what is the best for strengthening your arm muscles. Blow drying your hair. Oh, really? Yes. This show's not just about design tips, exercise tips as well. <laughs> now that the large Renaults have been tackled, we're converting Simone's dining area into a clearly defined living space that appeals to bars the moment they walk in. And in what used to be the living room, we're making room for a dining area and putting the closet door discreetly under the stairs. Ah! We're moving the island in the kitchen to create a casual eating area. Go. Oh, gosh, it is heavy. <coughs> it's on my toe. Oh, oh. oh my God. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Upstairs, the improvements to the master bedroom are shaping up without breaking the bank. Replacing the linen with a more modern design lifts this room out of the doldrums. The second bedroom is a blank canvas, so all we're adding in here are fresh linens with matching wall hangings. Buyers will be drawn into the room by the bold designs on the bed. Several last-minute details will have Simone's house looking like the haven young professionals are looking for. First impressions can really make or break a sale. You want potential buyers to be getting excited as they're walking up to the house. And that means the porch has to be clean and clear of debris. So I've put some flowers up and I'm giving this just a lick of paint and soon we're looking very smart. Buyers will be looking at every detail, so don't leave any unfinished areas. Even a bottle of wine on the shelf is a simple but elegant touch. Setting the mood is so important. A display of candles has dramatic impact and the light is not only warm and soothing, it's also the most flattering. This house is going through an enormous change, but will buyers respond to the new look? It is amazing what we've achieved in this house with such a tiny budget. Simone's renovations added value, but then the money ran out and she was left with nothing for the decor. We've picked through her eclectic donated furniture, redistributed it through the house with dramatic effects. This home is now spacious and bright, and I think pretty soon Simone should be condo bound. The minute you walked into Simone's house, buyers were greeted with a front room that had a case of mistaken identity. But now it's gone from granny to gorgeous. We've repositioned two of Simone's own sofas to create a modern seating area. Covering over the door to the closet has created more wall space. Topped off with new paint, throw cushions and curtains, this room makes a great first impression. Further into the house, the sitting room was chock full of sofas. We've now made a proper dining area, again simply by moving Simone's own furniture around. The kitchen table is now the focal point. We've put the closet door in here and built some freestanding shelves. The new paint, light fixture and draperies make this room pop. Simone's kitchen was old and institutional, but we've moved the island in here to add counter space and a place to grab a bite. We spent just $94 on the kitchen backsplash and framed some inexpensive fabric to add colour to the walls. In the sunroom, we've slip covered a few dining room chairs and added some cushions. 
The master bedroom was quite the turn-off. Even Simone's shoes were trying to run away. So replacing the mattress with a proper bed, as well as 21st century linens and furnishings, helps buyers imagine themselves sleeping here. Full-length drapes, art and soothing new colours on the walls breathe life into this room. It now gives off a sophisticated ambiance potential buyers want. The second bedroom was an empty box. Not anymore. The day bed has new linens and throw pillows with my favourite poppy red designs. The use of space when preparing your home is key to making a deal. At a total cost of just $4,023, we've proven that a relatively small investment up front can potentially have a huge payoff later on. If you've got an open concept house, make sure your furniture matches. A ragtag collection of old and new pieces is not pleasing to the eye. Buyers need to be able to see that their furniture is going to fit in your home. So the flow of a room is really important. The awkward placement of doors or too much furniture can be a real turn-off. Decluttering should not leave your house looking like a boring white box. Personal effects add interest, make your house look lived in and mean it's more memorable to potential buyers. What will Simone think? Oh my gosh! Holy cannoli! I feel like I'm looking at a place out of a magazine. I think I have an amazing chance of selling this place finally. And anybody who wouldn't want to buy this house is insane. Simone is convinced, but what about potential buyers? Come on in. Thank you. Well, this is the sitting room, as you can see. What a change. You've been here before. We have. What were your first impressions last time? I think we were a little disappointed. Today, I, I would say that it is a lot of what we had expected before, and then some. Come on through to the kitchen. I don't even know how to describe the changes, but I have to tell you, this is pretty impressive. Come on in. What are your first impressions? Having a two and a half year old, I love this open concept. Yeah. It is just a great idea to be able to be in the kitchen and see them. Yeah. Come on through to the kitchen. <gasps> the beautiful kitchen. Wow. This is the master bedroom. Oh, wow. Closet doors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have salvaged the majority of Simone's furniture and we've made the most of every inch of this house. The result, it's light, it's modern and most importantly, it's move-in ready. This is exactly the turnaround this house needed to become sellable. Less than a week later, Simone sold her house for a whopping $20,000 above asking price. We've turned this house from unsellable to sold. Candace and Fulton's home. It's so full of junk. This mess has put a strain on our marriage. If you haven't used it in the last six months, it goes. Just accumulated junk. home is a tricky business. On the one hand, you want to get it over and done with as soon as possible. You don't want to invest time and money in a property you're going to unload. But on the other hand, your house has to be looking at its best to sell. My job is to give advice on how to turn unsellable houses into unstoppable sellers. This two-storey detached house has a sunroom, a living-dining combination and three bedrooms. It's listed at $489,000, but owners Candace and Fulton haven't had any bites in six weeks. They're newlyweds, they want to start a family, so they need a bigger house, and I'm here to turn their dream into a reality. Candace, a physiotherapist, and husband Fulton, a sports fanatic, got married a year ago. I've been a bachelor for, I guess, eight years, and I've owned the house for nine. After I got married, I moved into Fulton's house with my own personal belongings. However, it turns out to be a disaster. <laughs> Fulton has sentimental attachment to many, many belongings in the house. Yes, I admit I am a pack rat. And it's that junk that's tearing this newlywed couple apart. This mess has put a strain on our marriage. We have no space for my stuff. 
So we're thinking that by moving and starting fresh again, that might give us a, a clean canvas to, to begin our lives together. To save their marriage, they need to move. We really need a fresh start. Candice and Fulton's home is located in a very desirable neighbourhood. It's a hop, skip and a jump to one of the city's largest green spaces. With its mix of elegant turn-of-the-century mansions and newer builds, houses usually sell within a week. But Candice and Fulton's house has been on the market for six weeks at slightly below the average price for the neighbourhood. It should have sold by now. Something must be very wrong. From the outside, this looks like a really great starter home, but they haven't received a single offer, and I need to find out why. You have got to be kidding me. I have never in all my days seen this much junk, and this is supposed to be a first impression? If I was a buyer, I'd be running out that door. Hmm, I'm not surprised. It doesn't get any better. It's a shame, because you've got nice sofa, nice chairs, open plan concept. Do I see any of that? Nope. You've got a baseball, you've got a volleyball, you've got flags, you've got another Chinese hat. Now, what is this? Is it a pillow? Is it... I mean, I have no idea, and even if it is a pillowcase. It's way too big for the chair. Just accumulated junk. Why have they got an office chair right up against their dining room? They have their artificial Christmas tree still on display. I mean, look, her shoes are under the drinks cabinet. This is a real turn-off. This is not a bad kitchen. There's a lot of storage space. There's a lot of prep space. It's a really nice size, but they are doing their level best to disguise the fact. Look at the ceiling. The paint is peeling off. Now, that's going to make a lot of buyers think there's a damp problem. What is in here? Why do you need a bag full of restaurant napkins? This is a jar full of broken bits of candle. That's not normal. This whole floor could be great. You've got a nice big sitting room dining leading on to a big kitchen. But instead, it's a complete mess. The clutter continues upstairs, and that's not the worst of it. There's a hole in the door. It's missing a handle. The door jam has been pulled off. That is not a good first impression. The foot of the bed's come off and is being used as a clothes horse. There's all these cables coming down from the television. Messy, chaotic master bedrooms do not sell houses. Buyers should be leaving with a sense of the house's space and potential, but with the junk floor to ceiling, they can't see the wood from the trees, and it makes this house completely and utterly unsellable. If Candace and Fulton want to sell this house and save their marriage, they need some sense knocked into them. Fulton, Candace, you cannot sell a house in this state. You do realise that, don't you? Now, Candice, you must really be in love to be able to coexist in this space. It's been hard living here. I've been trying to make space for myself and I'm mm -hmm. doing constant decluttering. Sunroom? It's not a sunroom. The windows are blocked with junk. I don't know what to say, Sophie. Nine years of living in the same place. I've just collected a lot of stuff. I mean, just look at this table. <laughs> what is this? And what, more importantly, what is it doing on your dining room table? We've decluttered some. Um, I think <laughs> there was a lot more prior to this. I understand this is sentimental, but you've got to get rid of it. So, sunroom. We're going to just empty it out. We're going to organise it. Mm -hmm. In here, I want to be able to see the floor. I want to place the furniture in a traditional way. Sitting room, dining room, and then in the kitchen, we're just going to completely clear it out. Now, is that water damage? I think it's just over time, the, the over paint's time. come off, yeah. We're going to turn the master bedroom into a proper master bedroom. What happened to the bed? It's like you've pulled off the bottom of the bed so you can use it to hang your clothes. Buyers need to be able to see this house's size and potential, and for them to be able to do that, we'll need to do a ruthless declutter. 
Are you ready? I'm ready. Good. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Candace and Fulton's two-storey brick home has good bones and it's in a fantastic neighbourhood, but it is so full of their junk that buyers can't see its true potential. It's not surprising they haven't got any offers because buyers literally can't see what they're buying. That's why I'm really intrigued to meet the real estate agent because surely she's tried to show Candace and Fulton the light. Susan, have you told them that selling a house in that state with that amount of clutter is almost impossible? Oh, absolutely. I sat down with them and I said, we have to get rid of this. You can't see anything. You need to call a junk company and you need to be ruthless. Mm -hmm. And Fulton would chuckle. He had a greater emotional attachment to everything than Candace did. It must be incredibly frustrating for you. How does that feel? Yeah, it's not great. When I came the first time and told them what they needed to do and I got the nods, yes, we're gonna do that. And then I came back about two weeks later and I looked and I went, so what have you done? Now, have you had any um, feedback from potential buyers who have walked in the house? Just that they can't really walk in the house. So, once we've decluttered, sorted out the front of the house, made the master bedroom look like a master bedroom rather than a frat dorm at 489 in this neighbourhood. Do you think we've got a good chance of a quick sale? I certainly hope so. That's the objective. I need to succeed where Susan has failed and prove to Candace and Fulton that a complete declutter is the only way to get a sale. So showing them a home that's sold in seven days at 10% over asking should do the trick. What are your first reactions when you walk in? Very clean. There's no clutter. It's clear. It's empty. Nice. <laughs> it doesn't feel like anybody's living in this space. It's not empty. What they've done is they've chosen things carefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful room. It's mm -hmm. very calming. Mm -hmm. Now come on through to the dining sure. room. What are your feelings about this? There's nothing on the dining table. <laughs> exactly. When I walk into your dining room, I can't actually imagine eating on the dining room table because of the amount of clutter. I mean, do you have people around a lot in your house? Not as much with all the clutter recently. I think what they've done in this kitchen is really, really clever. Mm -hmm. I noticed there, there's plenty of prep space. Mm -hmm. I could probably cook many meals here. Mm -hmm. It's also really, really, really clean. Yes, it is. Anyway, come upstairs. <laughs> wow. Now, I really, really like this bedroom. And you know what? It made me feel happy as soon as I walked in. You know, you can see the details in this house. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at all the clutter. You don't feel hemmed in. You can see the house. It, it feels really calming. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is hard to keep a house in this condition, but this is what you have to do if you want to sell. It's going to involve <laughs> some, you know, willpower and dedication, yeah. but it's worth it. Absolutely. Now, I know that this house was popular because mm -hmm. it sold in seven days for 10% over asking wow. price. Wow. Yeah. yeah, they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> to make Candace and Fulton's house sell just as fast, contractor Anthony says has his work cut out for him. Anthony, will you tell Candace and Fulton what you're going to do to get this house sold? First things first, we need to address the sunroom. I think you need to create more storage space. Definitely. Okay. So if we just create some horizontal and vertical storage, that will tidy up the room and just keep it clean, right? Okay. Sure. The main work here will be the decluttering so buyers can see the true proportions of this house. Next is the ceiling and the kitchen here. It looks like you mixed oil and latex together, so that's why it's bubbling like that. We just need to strip the paint and repaint it. Okay. Upstairs, the door frame and the door needs to be replaced. Sure. That's a quick fix and mm -hmm. it shouldn't actually be left like that. Oh, I don't want to start. Come have on. have so much to do. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Letting go of nine years of accumulated junk isn't easy. 
Think of me as quality control. If you haven't used it in the last six months, it goes. Right. It's simple and brutal. And don't even try to declutter by stuffing everything into a closet. Buyers love opening closet doors, and if it's stuffed to the rafters, they'll suspect there's a storage problem. This should have been done a long time ago. You're doing yourself a favour by getting rid of what you don't need now, so you don't lug it unnecessarily to your next property. Fulton, if you put that deflated exercise ball in storage, I will lose my marbles completely. <laughs> Give it here. Come on. It's been tough, but uh, it's a little liberating. Newlyweds Candace and Fulton have to sell their house to save their marriage, so Fulton has to part with nine years of accumulated junk. Garbage. Garbage. No, I think it's... I feel better. I do feel better. Throw it out. But clutter isn't the only thing turning buyers off, and we have just three days till the open house. Some of the feedback from buyers has been this step is bust. How are we going to fix it? Well, it's a quick fix. So first we need to clean out whatever loose concrete and debris is in there. You just need to chip away at it. Right. Right, and then just vacuum it out or sweep it out. Probably Not vacuum. with a regular vacuum. No. With, <laughs> with an industrial. Yes. I don't want someone ruining their brand new no. vacuum. Yeah, the so, shop vac would be the best. OK, so you hoover it out with an industrial vacuum, then? Then you mix up uh, some concrete, and I've got the special adhesive. You can so pour some of that bonding agent into this bucket, and then I'll just brush the area that we're going to put the concrete. OK. This will just help bond the new concrete to the old concrete. And then we're ready for concrete. OK. So I'm just going to take some of this. And then I will just use my trowel. And just kind of get it into those edges there. OK. Well, I might leave you to it then. OK. Candice is finishing the decluttering. And with a sunroom now clear, Anthony can work his magic. The sunroom is lacking in storage, so we need to create more storage for the actual room. So what I'm going to do is build three separate cubby holes, and then I'll mirror the same thing underneath. One, two, three. Once it's all built, we just prime it and paint it, and it'll be beautiful like the rest of this room. A project like this might be a little ambitious for a regular homeowner, so you might want to start with something more basic and work your way up to something like this, or hire a professional to do this. You can't sell a house with peeling paint on the ceiling. Buyers will think it's water damage. I missed all the stuff coming down from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, you I'm so happy, Anthony. Finally, oh. there is room to breathe in this house. Yes. All that rubbish is gone. Yeah, no, it's nice that it's all gone. Oh, it's sure. amazing. Now, how are we going to fix the ceiling, then? Well, first, uh, we just need to scrape off any loose paint. It Done was caused that. because of uh, they mix oil and latex together, so that's what caused the bubble. Right. And then uh, you can plaster it. Yeah and then let it dry and then sand it and then paint the whole ceiling. Is it going to dry in time because it's a bit damp now? It should be done in like half an hour. Anyway, I suppose if the ceiling is still wet during the open house, no one's going to knock into it and get paint on the back of there. No, that'll be... No one will know. Yeah, OK, exactly. brilliant. Well, I'll let you get to it. OK, excellent. Taking down those nasty blinds lets the sun in. This space is getting a fresh coat of paint. Remember, white, light and bright sells. Clearing out the dining room revealed the chairs and they needed reupholstering. But it's a cheap and easy fix. Easy peasy. Ta-da. Now that Anthony has done the kitchen ceiling, revealing the hidden countertops and freeing up wall space, some good old-fashioned elbow grease to clean the grime will add value. Buyers loathe a dirty kitchen. And it's amazing, it looks so much fresher in here already. And now all the clutter's gone, you can actually see the kitchen cabinets and the storage. In the bedroom, we're replacing the frame and using a brand new door with hinges already attached. It costs a little bit more, but it's less labour intensive. When all the work is complete, fluffing the house is the last thing on your list. Clean windows let more light in, and goodness knows this house needs it. So clean your windows, and if you can't do it yourself, hire someone else to. While we're on the topic of light, keep your rooms bright. Dimly lit can read as dingy, so make sure the lamps are all on. 
If you've got buyers coming round, open the windows and let the fresh air in. There is nothing worse than a smelly, stuffy house. Just doing a bit of weeding and getting the rubbish out of the flower beds. Now that Candice and Fulton's mess is in order, will buyers jump at their clutter-free home? After a massive decluttering job, the lovely features in this home are beautifully showcased. This whole house was testament to Fulton's obsession with collecting junk, especially in the sunroom. The change is breathtaking. We threw out 90% of it. We took the blinds off the windows, built storage units at the back of the room, and repurposed some chairs to watch the sunset. Potential buyers will immediately fall in love. The living room was in the same sorry state, but we've changed all that. We kept a few pieces of furniture of the same design, added some drapery, accessories, and a lick of paint. The room now ensures buyers will stay for good. We could barely see the old dining room, but it's amazing what decluttering can do. We've added some inexpensive wall hangings, plants, and an area rug to convert this into an elegant dining space. Candice and Fulton's old kitchen had great bones, but again, all that clutter. We got rid of the junk, patched up the ceiling, and spruced up the walls with new paint. This kitchen is now the sparkling heart this home needed. I doubt buyers would have made it as far as the old master bedroom, but now we've replaced the damaged door and frame, taken the TV off the wall, and added clean, fresh sheets and pillows. Now this master bedroom radiates a zen-like calm. At a total cost of $3,600, decluttering Candice and Fulton's home has untapped its potential as a market winner. We've turned it into an upscale, romantic and sellable house. It's no longer the eyesore it once was. Declutter, declutter, then declutter some more, because less is definitely more when you're trying to create an attractive environment for potential buyers. Tour your house, watching where your eyes go. Peeling paint, decrepit doors, crumbling stairs, all make your home feel shabbier than it needs to. So fix and replace deteriorating areas, because you don't want to ruin that impression. When you're selling your house, you have to look like you care about it. If buyers think you've just shoved a for sale sign in the front yard and you're not even trying to make your house look appealing, they will walk out the front door and never come back. Decluttering complete, but will Fulton take to the changes? Oh my god, this is not the same sunroom. Wow. <sighs> See, this is our furniture, but they look so much better now. It looks so good. <laughs> okay, see, this is a dining table, Fulton. It should be like this. If I walk in, I would buy this place. Oh my god, those cutters? Oh god, Fulton. So I love it. The door's fixed. <laughs> the TV's gone. All those crazy cables are gone. Wow. It's romantic. It's incredible. This is how I always want a family and a home to look like. I feel a little uh, ashamed that she couldn't get a chance to enjoy it in the state that it's in. Fulton has finally seen the light, but what will buyers think? So, guys, what are you looking for? I'm looking for something as a starter home. Right. Well, as you can see, you come straight into the sunroom, and there's a lot of storage there. Yeah, that's really nice for yeah. storage. I think it's really nice, clean and cozy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's just perfect. Perfect? Yeah. Can't do better than perfect. Wow, this is really nice. I like. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Nice and bright. Yep. I really like cooking, so uh -huh. this would be my space. <laughs> <laughs> this is my space. My sp I like the layout of this house. <laughs> it's a big smile when you walked in. Yeah, it's cosy. It is cosy. So you'll be bringing your husband back and your daughter back. I will. Fantastic. This home now shows beautifully, and now the home can actually be seen for everything it has to offer. And buyers agreed. Shortly after the Unsellables team left, Candace and Fulton sold their house for 96% of the asking price. We've turned this house from unsellable to sold.